Hello guys, uh, hopefully everybody can hear me. Um, I know we had quite a few technical difficulties um, yesterday, so fingers crossed today's one um, goes well. <clears throat> so welcome back to our virtual zoo um, educational sessions. For, your, for those of you who don't know uh, who I am, I'm Liam and I'm one of the animal keepers here at uh, zoo to you um, I was, I did do the one on Wednesday, um, so hopefully um, people know me from that, but if not, then that means you're new, which is great. We really want new people um, and hopefully you enjoy our sessions. So we've been learning about uh, the different layers of the rainforest this week. And today being Friday, we're on the last layer. So um, it's the forest floor layer. So we've gone all the way from the top, from uh, the emergent layer, all the way down. And now we're on the forest floor. So this is the last, uh, the last layer that we, uh, we're going to learn about today. So we've been setting you some homework this week and all week we've been asking you to create your own uh, your own rainforest. So um, it can either be a 2D drawing or it can be a 3D model. And um, we've had some really, really creative um, entries, which is really, really good. And then each day we're just going to ask you to add to it. So we're going to teach you about that layer of the rainforest and then we're going to ask you to add um, things that we've spoken about. So. Um, hopefully you've all got quite a lot in your rainforest and today we'll be adding a little bit more as well. So that is the daily homework. Um, we want you guys to add some bits from uh, the forest floor. So we're going to be talking about quite a lot of different things, not just animals. Um, so there are quite a few different things that live on the forest floor and hopefully you guys um, will be able to get really creative like you have been doing and add loads of uh, loads of stuff on the forest floor and then um, your creations will be complete and uh, hopefully you'll be really happy with them. We've been really, really happy with the response so far, so try your best to keep that up. So we'll go on to actually speak about the forest floor, what it looks like. Now, if you... Um, that live on the forest floor, fungi is extremely important. So these little mushrooms here um, that you can see on your screen, really, really important. And that's because they invade wood, so rotten wood, and they basically break it down. And then all the nutrients from that wood, all the minerals, they'll go down uh, the mushroom, down the fungi, into the soil. And then the soil absorbs all that nutrients and then it gets dispersed out into all the different um, the different plants and stuff. And if you think of it on a larger scale, the, the fungi are really, really important for um, the trees to grow. 
And obviously that has a knock-on effect because the trees produce oxygen for us to breathe, for all animals to breathe. So um, the fungi is really important to make them trees grow because without it, there wouldn't be enough oxygen for us to breathe. So fungi are really, really important. Now, you might not think that the forest floor needs to be healthy per se because it's not exactly um, an animal or anything like that. But it is the forest floor is one big living thing, really. Um, so it needs to it's really, really important. It stays in good health um, for, the, for the reasons I've mentioned um, in terms of uh, how important it is for the trees to grow uh, and also feeding all the animals that live there and creating creating that important oxygen that not only us, but other animals also need to breathe as well. So it's not just small animals and organisms that live on the forest floor. There are big animals that um, uh, that basically rely on the forest floor as well. So for example, in the Amazon rainforest, the apex predator, the big top predator in the Amazon rainforest is a jaguar. And jaguars are um, predominantly uh, floor species. So they, they, they spend the majority of the time on the floor they, do, they will climb a little bit, but the majority of the time they're on the floor um, hunting. So the forest floor is really important for, for big species as well. Also, gorillas, as you can see in this picture, um, they build their nests. They don't build them in trees like you might think. They build them on the floor usually. They can build them in trees, but um, it's usually um, mainly on the forest floor that they build the nests. And so even the forest floor is really important for big animals like uh, gorillas as well. The forest floor is pretty much where the food chain starts. So if you can imagine the plants growing out of the forest floor, they feed the herbivores and then them in turn um, feed the carnivores. So without the forest floor, the big carnivores like the jaguar wouldn't be able to live and the big herbivores like the gorilla, they wouldn't be able to live because the plants that they wouldn't grow either. So the forest floor is extremely important for all different types of animals, small or big. But we're going to talk about one of our smaller animals today uh, because we don't have any gorillas or jaguars to show you. That would be a little bit dangerous. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you one of our cockroaches. Now, these cockroaches, some people might think they're a little bit, um, you know, horrible and creepy and stuff. But they're really, really cool. They've got some really cool aspects about them. So I'll grab one out and hopefully you guys will be able to see and learn a little bit about them. So this, if you can see, is a giant Madagascan hissing cockroach. So the angle's quite bad on the camera. Let me just, there we go. So there's its head and there's its body. So it's quite big, as you can see on my finger, it's, it's relatively big. They are quite, um, quite large cockroaches. They are technically um, giant cockroaches, um, but you do get much, much bigger cockroaches than this. So in terms of, Cockroach size, they're probably about medium sized, I'd say, something like that. Now, these are actually hissing cockroaches. Um, so, the hissing is a really good, um, basically, defense mechanism that they use when, they're, um, when they feel threatened. So, when I picked her up just then, she gave me a little bit of a hiss because she thought I was going to maybe going to hurt her or whatever. Um, and that's what they'll do if, if something tries to eat them. So, say, for example, something like um, a temrep was to come up to it and try and eat it. Um, what it would do is it would hiss really, really loudly. And then that would probably startle the temrep, which would give the, the cockroach the time to, um, to try and run off. So um, it's a really, really cool little thing that they've got. It doesn't always work. As you can imagine, a hiss isn't exactly the scariest thing in the world, but sometimes it is, um, it is quite successful. So another thing about this cockroach is that it's an invertebrate. An invertebrate basically means no backbone. So if you guys watched the um, the uh, the live streams we did a few weeks ago, uh, we did invertebrates in that, and you learn all about them and the fact that they don't have a backbone. They have a skeleton on the outside. So this hard shell that she's got on the outside here, this is um, basically her protection. Now it's not very good protection if I was to squeeze her um, I wouldn't have to squeeze very hard. I could easily break it. But it's just something to give her a little bit of rigidity, something to give her a little bit of shape because she doesn't have any bones inside her body. 
So she needs this exoskeleton on the outside, this hard shell, to give her a little bit of shape. Now, as I said, it doesn't really protect her very much. So she needs something else to protect her from predators, and that's camouflage. So if I try and show you her colours, so she's kind of black, but also she's got like stripes of brown as well. I don't know if you can see that. And this is really, really good for her because it's the exact same colour of the forest floor. So she'd be really, really difficult to see um, on the forest floor. If something was looking for her, looking for a nice tasty meal, um, they'd really struggle because she can hide in amongst the leaves and amongst the soil. Um, they, a lot of the time they hide underneath bark um, in trees and stuff like that. So um, they're really, really hard to, um, to find for predators. Probably the coolest thing about these guys is that they are probably one of the hardiest hardiest animals um, in the world. And that's because they can live up to a week without the heads. Uh, and that's for the simple reason that they don't breathe through the faces like we do. We breathe through our mouths and noses. These guys actually breathe through the bodies. Uh, so if, you, if I was to chop her head off, which I'm not gonna do, she wouldn't die. She'd still be able to survive. And then she'd eventually she'd die of starvation um, because she, she breathes through her body. So. You know, she's going to she, she can't eat without her head. She can't drink without her head. So um, she's going to die of starvation and thirst. But she can live without her head for a week, which is an extremely cool little feature that they um, that cockroaches have. And that's all cockroach species as well. Some people think that they're so um, adaptable that they would actually be able to survive a nuclear war. Uh, that Obviously, that's not proven, um, but that's a really cool feature if they can do that as well. Now. If you guys want to include these in your um, your little designs, your rainforest designs, uh, that'll be really, really cool. That'll be, um, you know, that's the kind of what we're aiming for. But these are relatively easy to draw. So you've just got the, the exoskeleton here, and then there's a little head poking out of the front. These two antenna that you can see, and then the six legs. And these legs have got little little barbs on them, and they basically help them to, to grip onto things. So you can imagine the forest floor, it's not very, um, you know, it's not like a, a flat surface. There's loads of things to be able to climb over and climb under and stuff. And that's what the barbs on the legs are for, basically. So they basically help them to, to climb over stuff. The antenna are just feelers, what they use to feel around. They come off out of the, out of the head here. And because they haven't got very good eyesight, they need to be able to, to feel around. So um, they're not walking into stuff all the time, basically. Um, so the antenna, that's what they're used for. And the head is really, really small underneath the, um, the exoskeleton. So um, I don't know if you can see, it's really difficult to see, but the, the head is really, really small under there. So when you are drawing these guys, they're relatively easy to draw because they're quite simple creatures. Um, so if you want to include one of the other animals as well, um, that'd be really cool. Probably the most important thing about these cockroaches is the diet. So remember how I spoke about the fungi and how that uh, basically recycles? These cockroaches do the exact same thing. So we call this a detritivore. Now that's quite a long word. I don't expect everybody to remember that. Um, but if you just Google it, you'll be able to find out how it's spelled and try your best um, to get that into your head and remember it. Because these guys are just in, as important, probably even more important than the herbivores and the carnivores because they eat decaying food. So rotten leaves, rotten wood, rotten vegetation that's fallen off the trees, for example, fruit and stuff like that, that nobody else wants to eat. These guys are from Madagascar, so they'll probably find loads of stuff left over by lemurs. Um, and then once they've eaten it, and it comes out of the other end, it then helps to fertilize the soil. So they basically recycle all the food that they've eaten and then once it once it comes out, it helps to fertilize all the soil, which, as, as I've mentioned, exactly the same as the fungi, helps all the plants to grow. So they're a really, really um, important part of um, the forest ecosystem. These guys, millipedes, other invertebrates as well, they all do the exact same job. Can't just be left to cockroaches. Um, so quite a lot of invertebrates do that job. Um, so even though you might think they're, you know, quite unimportant, they're actually really, really important in terms of um, the whole ecosystem of the forest. So that's pretty much it for this little guy. 
um, or girl, I should say. The last thing I'll tell you is that we've, don't jump off, here she is, is that we've got quite a lot of these cockroaches and that's because they, um, they give birth to a lot of babies. So invertebrates, because they don't have much protection, um, they basically need to give birth to a lot of babies to ensure that um, they're successful. So a lot of invertebrates that are born will get eaten, which means they, they um, have to give birth to loads to make sure um, quite a few survive to adulthood. So we've actually had babies quite recently, a couple of months ago. We had 50, 50 little babies from uh, just a male and a female cockroach, and all 50 of them are still alive. So um, they are doing really, really well. Uh, but in the wild, as you can imagine, 50 definitely wouldn't still be alive because they'd just get eaten and things like that. So invertebrates, um, they always have loads and loads of babies. The majority of them do lay eggs. Um, this one is a little bit unique because they technically um, have eggs, but they don't actually lay them out. So instead of laying them, um, the babies hatch inside the cockroach and then they'll come out uh, a little bit like giving birth naturally, um, but they were in eggs inside the cockroach. So um, they've got quite a few unique features. Hopefully you guys will remember um, quite a few of them that we've spoken about and you can incorporate some of them into uh, your design as well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move on and look at a few of the, the past homeworks um, that we've been sent. Now we've picked out a couple um, from two separate families. This one is from the Carroll family, which is really, really impressive. They've got loads of different features in here. Um, they've introduced loads of the animals that we've spoken about. So you can see the panther chameleon, the emerald tree boa, the lion tailed macaque, and um, the really cool trees, the little lake that goes through uh, the rainforest as well. And um, there's loads of cool features. So hopefully you guys um, will be watching and hopefully you um, can add into your, uh, your little rainforest as well. Don't forget, don't try not just to add the cockroach. We do want the cockroach in there, but if you can, I know it might be a bit more difficult to draw a jaguar or a gorilla, but if you guys can um, try and draw one of them as well, that would be really, really cool. Maybe a gorilla sleeping in its nest on the floor or something like that as well. We've also got the tenant family. Again, really, really inventive, really creative, loads of different things that they've added. They've added the parrots in, the bats. They've got the, the lake going through the forest as well. The clouds. They've got the monkey in there. Loads of different things. So, again, hopefully you guys um, will be able to um, put some stuff on the forest floor, like the soil and the leaves and, and all the, the, the vegetation and stuff like that, and then add your animals in as well that we've spoken about today. So we're just going to go over a quick recap. We looked at the forest floor layer. Do you remember what features it has? So don't forget um, the fungi as well. Very, very important part. And the fact that it just looks like one big compost heap. We also met the hissing cockroach. Um, there's loads of different cool little features um, of the hissing cockroach. So hopefully you guys will be able to remember some of them. Also, don't forget to, to add to your, uh, your rainforests. And again, as I said on Wednesday, don't feel like if you've not designed a rainforest yet, then you can't. We, you know, there's no time limit on um, when you can do this by. Um, it's just really, really cool to see all your designs. So don't feel like um, you don't, you can't get involved. You can catch up whenever you need to, um, and then uh, hopefully we'll be able to see some of your really cool designs as well. Because we do, we do like seeing them, and it's nice to know that um, basically people are watching and people are interacting with us and people are enjoying the, uh, the streams and stuff like that. So there's loads of people to thank today, um, just before we finish. So all these people that you can see on the screen, a really big thank you to all of them. And um, please, please, please don't forget about our little fundraiser that we've got going. Um, it's really, really important to us. As you guys probably know, we don't get any money in at the minute because we can't go out and teach so that's why we're doing these virtual zoo sessions to basically help you guys um, and try and teach you guys while we're we're not we're unable to go out. The, the fundraiser is kind of slowing at the minute, so we've not had any donations um, in the past week. So if you could 
try your best to push that. It would be really, really appreciated. Even if you've given all you can, we really, really appreciate that. Maybe tell your friends, tell your family um, about us. And if they watch a session and they think we're, we're okay and, and they enjoyed it, then they can, um, they can you know, donate as well. Uh, that would be really, really, we'd be really, really grateful for it. The crowdfunding page is, is on the, the, um, the screen there and also um, the PayPal link as well. If you, if you don't want to um, use the crowdfunding, you can just uh, stick it straight through on PayPal. That would be really appreciated. One final message from me is um, that we hope you, you enjoy, you've enjoyed all the sessions this week. Um, about all the, the rainforest, the different layers. We hope you've, you've learned a lot. And we try our best to use YouTube because uh, we feel like it's the, the best way to get um, a big reach from people. So if you can um, share our YouTube page, that would be amazing. Also, if you can get people to subscribe, we haven't got many subscribers, so um, that would be really, really appreciated um, if you could subscribe to our YouTube page as well. So thanks a lot, guys. Hopefully you've learned quite a bit today and um, just hope um, just try your best to, to add to your, your forests and we really look forward to seeing the the final uh, the final forests cheers guys see you later